Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. Hello, I'm Pastor George Pearsons, and welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Today, my wife, Pastor Terry Copeland Pearsons, continues to teach on the Constitution of the United States. We're living in a time that is vital that we understand the purpose of the Constitution and what we do with the liberty that God has given to us. We need to educate ourselves with God's wisdom through His Word. So get your Bibles and let's join Pastor Terry. We the people of the United States, let's think about that. There's something people aren't very aware of. So here we are, we are the people, we're individuals, but we make up the people. But in America, you are first a part of a state. Now, in the state, from the state's viewpoint, you are a part of your city or your district first. But from a constitutional standpoint, it's about the states. Did you know the Civil War was not fought over slavery? It shocks people. The Civil War was fought over states' rights. The, on that basis now, on that basis, the South was right. The North did not have a right to collectively invade Southern states and tell them what the, because slavery was a state-to-state -state decision. But through the course of the war, there was a great move of God. And that move of God rose in the people and it no longer became about that. It became about the Creator. See, it came to a higher level, which is in the Constitution. But it took an awakening from God to see it, that this was about the equality of people, which far supersedes the rights of any state. When, when the spiritual, when it, when it was elevated to a spiritual battle, well, the North began to win. The spiritual empowerment rose. Authority rose. There's darkness in people's thinking and in their minds. It was misinformation. It was, it, it, they were so, so blinded. But that awakening, as people awakened to it, and it took a while to sort all that back out to where we could have the equality among men and the states held their rights. So understanding things like that empowers us. We the people in the united States. Right now, you can see the division in our country. We, we look at it in color blocks. There's a red side, there's a blue side. In the 1800s, there was a north side and a south side. One side was embracing the higher qualities, the most, the higher values of God than the other. And we're back in that position right now to where you have one set of people who are valuing a higher value, regardless of what you think about finances and econ economics will always respond to life. That's good. That's good. You can have the best economic plan in the world, what you think should work, and it won't as long as you've got murder at the top of the list or dishonoring Israel. Those two things, one, the left one and the right one, that, that you get both of those wrong, I don't care what else you do. You got a curse working on you because they both come with a curse attached. Am I making any sense? Is this helping you any? Praise the Lord. So we the people of the United States, the success of this nation is dependent upon the unity of the states. How, how do you unify states? Unity is only a product of God Himself. The devil will unify 
but his unity produces division. It's the wildest thing. He produces disharmony. He produces strife. And what happens? They always turn on themselves. There's always confusion. Wherever there is strife, there's confusion and envy and jealousy and every evil work. That's why you can't find another nation that's lived, existed constitutionally as long as we have. We are the United States. And that didn't, that was a price they had to pay and it wasn't easy. Those 13 states, rah, 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 rah. they're together in Philadelphia. Rah, 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 rah. Argue, 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 argue. Weeks on end. But Ben Franklin, who stood up and said, you know, it's a curse to me that we have just come through a bloody war that everybody knows we should have lost. That we were a ragtag group a militia, not a military, a militia group of people doing what? Trying to defend ourselves for the honor of God and to create a nation where, whereby we can serve Him freely. And we know there's no way we could have won that war against the most formidable military force on the planet if it had not been for divine providence and in, uh, intervention. There's no way, he said. Now, he, these are my words. That's what he said. He says, so how do we think that we can form a new government and succeed as a nation without asking him for his help? It was a V8 moment for everybody. <laughs> so they went to their knees and they began to seek God and to pray. You see how easy it is to forget? But they sought God and they prayed. And out of that, I mean, in no time at all comes this living, breathing document that's infused with the very nature and quality of God and His Word. And He is as committed to its, his, its existence and its survival and its, um, its manifest. If the Word of God become, can become flesh, the Constitution, becomes flesh. It became, this constitution became a nation. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Yes. Right. So we can go to it, we can use it, and we can pray. And now this unity of states, unity is a product of the Holy Spirit, and it's a product of faith in Him, faith in the Lord and His Word. Yeah, we have different denominations. We have different ideas. We have different thoughts. That's okay. You know, there's, there's some, some walk in a stronger revelation of some things than others. Okay. But as long as Jesus is Lord, He can bring us together. As long as Jesus is Lord. Now you get that. If you don't have that, well, then you're not walking with Him anyway. The Constitution was a result of a miracle of the unification of the states. It was a miracle that it happened the way it did. Why? In order to form a more perfect union. Perfect means corresponding to an ideal standard, faithfully reproducing the original. Faithfully reproducing, Isaiah 33, 22. It means complete. It means legally valid. It means proficient. So we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. What is justice? The word gets thrown out, around a lot, but it's the quality of being just. See if, you, see if you catch a Bible word in here. The quality of being just, impartial, or fair. The principle or ideal of just methods, conduct and action. Conformity to a principle or ideal. Conformity to truth fact or reason, or in one word, righteousness. To establish righteousness. That's what this is for, this constitution. To establish righteousness. Who, who gets to pick what that looks like? We have 320 million people. You could get at least 300 million 
opinions, wanting it to favor me, selfish. How do you know? How do you know what's selfish, what's not? You go to Isaiah 33:22, the judge who has given his word, his law, and it defines. Don't throw out the Old Testament. The definition of righteous law is in the book. It's that book that tells you how to treat one another, how to, how to handle property, how to handle taxes, how to handle uh, civil taxes, uh, it, how to treat animals, how to divide up land. How, it tells you, it gives you insight into all of that. To establish righteousness. Righteousness or justice is a characteristic of God himself. And you, he is justice. He is righteousness. And that means there is no righteousness apart from him. And there is no unrighteousness in him. He's the summary of it. To ensure domestic tranquility. What's tranquility? Calmness, peacefulness. Man, when you can look at a city or a group of cities and they're all run by the same, the same governing mindset, and they're all being torn up and people are dying and they're on fire and property. The Bible, the constitution, which comes from the Bible, the right to own property and to not have somebody else come take it away or destroy it. This is core to this nation. And it's not okay to let some other yo-yo come in and bear down my business and steal my goods just because you think I've got more money than you do. Try to, that you try to be the great equalizer. God did not fall off of your throne and West boat to put you in his place. And another thing. So what else? To provide for the common defense. This is interesting. National defense belongs to the nation. We the people. But what about the state? State defense belongs to the state. That's another issue. Why did Katrina, why did so many people die in Katrina? Because the state nor the city would allow help from the government, but the government didn't have the right to go in there and demand it. They had to, this, and you think, that doesn't sound right. It's what God does. You want to go to hell? He'll stand by and watch you do. He'll yell, he'll scream, he'll beg, he'll plead. He'll send everybody that across your path. He'll preach on TV, radio, billboards. He'll get it to you every which way I can, but it's still your right to deny what he's offering. So it's his way. And the state has the right to invite the, the national guard. Am I right, Tap? Am I got this right? What about then the local? Local defense belongs to local government. The national, they don't have a right to come in and police my neighborhood. This all comes back down to who? Me. We vote on the police commissioner, the sheriff. We vote on that. We decide what that looks like unless you just give it over to somebody else. But again, where's that higher place of authority? When was the last time you were really on your face for the police department? When was the last time you were really in prayer and, and not just doing something nice? That'd be good too. We do a lot of that. But when was the last time you had a prayer group devoted strictly to your local police officers, firemen, police chief, sheriff, sheriff's department, etc.? Then your personal defense belongs to you. You are supposed to lock your doors. You are supposed to have a fence where you need one. Personal defense. And then to promote the general welfare, which means the opportunity to pursue happiness, the general well-being. It doesn't mean welfare in the sense that the government's supposed to pay for my life. What they pay for, they own. What you pay for, you should own. What you own, you should earn. What you should, you should own it. What you earn, you should own. It's not right. Not right for them to tell me. Doesn't the scripture say to take care of the poor? Yeah, it says, but it doesn't tell me what all I, how much is supposed to be. Galatians says, as determined in you, Corinthians, in your heart. I don't want some 
somebody in D.C. that doesn't know me decide how much I'm going to give and to who? Give to people I don't believe in? Okay, to secure the blessings of liberty. That's the purpose, to secure. Blessing means the invoking of God's favor. It means the benefits of. To secure the benefit of liberty. You've got to know what liberty is. It's a gift from God. He initiated it with your free will. You have the liberty to go to hell. Choose you this day. I've said before you, life and death, choose you this day. That's the core. That's core. God gave you liberty. It's valuable. But he also gave you responsibility of what you do with it, your choice. And it's not the government's right to take that away from us. With benefits come responsibility. With God's blessings comes responsibility. The purpose of the Constitution and our responsibility is to secure and see to it that our liberty is pre preserved for ourselves and our posterity in order to ordain and establish, to set up an organization, a set of rules on a permanent basis, this Constitution of the United States of America. So let's stand and we'll take the next few minutes here. And the Lord said, let's pray over the Constitution. Let's pray the Constitution. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. David, if you're available, David Ellis. Father, we thank you now that we have, we have fed our faith from your word and from the Constitution. And you said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. What is it to humble ourselves but to acknowledge who you are and what you have given us in responsibility and in authority whereby we execute our responsibilities. Humble ourselves, seek your face and pray. And I'm reminded, Lord, that we do it over and over. We pray, you respond. We pray, you respond. We pray, you continue to respond. We continue to pray and you continue to respond until there is a momentum of the great awakening in this nation unlike the world has never, ever, ever experienced. And where we saw in Exodus, Lord, the demonstration of your wrath in protecting your covenant people, that, Lord, we are believing for that same might and power of your demonstration but Lord, that it's a demonstration in the power of your awakening, the power of your resurrection, the power of your glory to lift up the church, to awaken the nation, to awaken the people to the power and the love and the might and the mercies of our God. So we pray, Lord, over this United States that indeed these states would be united again, even as you did in 1787 that, Lord, that you would reunite, unite these people, that you would reunite us in our churches, reunite, unite the body of Christ, but unite the, church, the states, Lord. Unite them in light of its, the outcome that's, that is in line with your plan. These united states, in order, Lord, that there be a more perfected, mature, and developed union. Lord, you said where there is agreement, there you are. We're asking, Lord, that, this, that the church rise and by faith draw unity, draw unity into this nation. Not, not unity of our, our flesh and natural thinking, but unity and look into you. Unity so that we have one Lord, one God, one Father, one faith, one baptism, one heart, one purpose. And that's the love of, of life, the love, the love of our Constitution, the love of your Word. And that, Lord, you would establish again amongst us justice or righteousness. That your righteousness, Lord, your, your, your so, the power of your rightness, so powerful that it causes everything to be right. 
We are the righteousness of God in Christ. Let the righteousness of God that's in the church flow out of us and cause this nation to become right before you again, right before the throne of righteousness, right in its motive, right in its purpose, right in its thinking, right in its ways, right in its, its heart, right in its heartbeat, in the name of Jesus. And that wrong thinking would be swallowed up in the righteousness of God and life. We pray, Father, uh, over, over peace, that peace of wholeness and well-being in this nation. We speak peace to our government, wholeness. Lord, make it right. Bring it back in line. Make it, these elections, make them right in Jesus' name. Bring them back in, the, the, the people demand righteousness, demand and see the value of it, to know the value of truth, the value of righteousness, that they begin love the truth, Lord. Not just facts, but the spirit of truth. Lord Jesus is the truth and the way that, Lord, we would love righteousness, love being right, love it, Lord, and conform to it. And that our nation, Lord, again, would be, would come to attention and come to order, order, order in Jesus' name so that we might secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and the generation, Lord, that is to follow us. And Lord, as we wrap up, we pray over our military. We pray over them and we pray for your mercies, Lord. Where sin does abound, Lord, your word says that grace has already much more abounded. It's already ahead of the sin. It's already there, but grace is em employed by faith. So by faith, Lord, we call that by your mercies, let grace abound. By your mercies, let grace abound. Let grace abound in our military. Lord, that there be a sweeping awakening in our military. Lord, from the bottom up, from the top down. Lord, let soldiers, let, 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 let every level and rank of military personnel have an encounter and awakening unto God. That, Father, there is no one greater than another. That all men in the military are created equal in your sight. And they all need a Savior. They all need a Redeemer. They all need a baptizer in the Holy Spirit. They all need a helper. They all need the Word. They all need the throne of God in their favor. And so I'm asking you to wake them up. Let them see themselves as they are without you and let them see themselves in light of your mercy and your love and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, of Jesus, of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because of the blood of the Lamb. We can stand fast and give the faith command that Satan, take your hands off of our government. Take your hands off our military. Take your hands off our nation. Take your hands off our states. Take your hands off our cities. Take your hands off our people. And as we, the church, we stand in the gap for every lost soul, every lost soul in this nation. And Lord, is our faith, our cry, that every person in the boundaries of the United States of America would come to see and to hear and to know Jesus, that their eyes would be opened and that the labors of the field would be multiplied and multiplied and multiplied and that the anointing would increase so that every man has opportunity to hear and every man is blessed to have his ears open so that he might see, that he might fairly and justly choose between life and death and to know that Jesus himself is the Lord of life. We give you praise for it in the name of Jesus. You give thanks to God for that. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the United States of America. Thank you for our military. Thank you for a godly government. Thank you for a godly people. Thank you for a godly nation whose God is the Lord. Shout amen. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth. As a born-again believer, you have a comforter. You've been given the Holy Spirit. During this time of turmoil, upheaval, and stress, you're able to stand in faith, knowing that God has a word for you, 
and God has a word for your nation. In the book, One Word from God Can Change Your Nation by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, Creflo Dollar, Happy Caldwell, and John G. Lake, you can be reminded that you're on the victory side of all the things happening around you. Anchor your soul and be the light in the darkness. You can have hope knowing the Almighty God has a blood covenant with you and your family. When we're confronted by impossible situations in this world, we have a covenant right to factor in Jesus. Take your stand on the victory side and immerse yourself in the Word of God. Learn how God can change even the worst situation. No matter what is happening around you, delve into God's Word and prepare for an awakening to God. Request your free book, One Word from God Can Change Your Nation by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. Every born again believer has the spiritual influence that can change their government and nation. It's the power of prayer. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225-787-310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. The Constitution is to establish righteousness. The purpose of the Constitution and our responsibility is to secure and see to it that our liberty is preserved. Unity is the product of the Holy Spirit and of faith in God in His Word. Pastor Terry prayed a strong anointed prayer at the end of today's message that should be a declaration that stays in our hearts and in our mouths. If you missed part one of her study yesterday, you can go back and watch it free on kcm.org or KCM's Roku channel. Now remember to order your free book from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. It's absolutely free. One word from God can change your nation. Be inspired as you read the biblical accounts of how the prayers of righteous people change the hearts of leaders. Learn how to keep your heart turned toward God and be quick to pray. Kenneth and Gloria, Creflo Dollar, Happy Caldwell share revelations from their studies to equip us to pray the word that changes everything. Read this together as a family or study it with your prayer group. Let's put faith and love into action for our nation. To go to kcm.org, request your free book today, and we will send that and get that out to you. Let me ask you, are you receiving the Believer's Voice of Victory magazine, a magazine that is just full of information about the Word of God? It is a free magazine that is distributed to partners and friends around the world. I was part of the beginnings of that magazine way, way back. So go to kcm.org to get your free subscription, or you can read the digi digital interactive version online and share the bonus content videos and the downloads. Feed your spirit a healthy diet of the Word of God and keep growing spiritually. Well, remember this. This is Pastor George reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us today. Receive today's Believer's Voice of Victory free at kcm.org.uk. Start the new year with victory like never before. This special four-day meeting with Kenneth Copeland begins December 31st and runs through January 3rd. You have the greatest coming year that yes. you have ever had in all of your life because 2022 is going to see some things happen that you know should have come to pass a long time ago. Get laser focused on the uncompromising Word of God with Victory First right here at Eagle Mountain International Church starting December 31st at 7 p.m.